So uh, we are here and we communicate, we use our language. And, but often in the world we fight with each other with the words. We are having disagreements, wives and husbands, children and uh, uh, adults, parents, also nations, the leaders of the nations are quarreling with each other with dramatic consequences, wars and so on are surrounding us. So why wouldn't we live in harmony to understand each other, each other's needs and, and to be able to live in such a way that we wouldn't have all those uh, troubles around us. Traditionally, our societies have been very hierarchical, there have been dictators and so on. And it seems that the current societies in most parts of the world, so we have democracies and we are better off with democracy. The democracy is a way, methodology, to try to organize our life in a such a way that we would have a better uh, spread of, of happiness around us. In economy, there have been situations where economy has been very peaked in such a way that people haven't had a chance to be enriched also economically. But now we live most of the time in a market economy which provides us in a way a dynamic system where, where we can live uh, and prosper properly. And the opposites are then communism where there was the idea that we would plan everything and that didn't seem to work. And maybe another end is the extreme capitalism which may also lead into a situation where we, we are not kind of spreading our wealth in an appropriate way. What about knowledge and understanding? We go to schools, we have sciences, we have religions, and often there is a kind of hidden idea that someone knows what is right, someone knows what is the truth, in a way. And then we have institutions that uh, then tell that this is the truth and th these are the ways how you should see the world. And, and then it's actually the opposite, it's like it should be like what we have in democracy, what we have in market economy, that all have opportunity to understand the world the way we are understanding it. In a subjective way, in a way which is contextual. Contextual in the sense that we are in each situation. Let's talk about contextuality first. We have uh, here four options. Whether this picture that we have, is it grey? blue, white, bluish, and whether, what is the context there. Uh, I could make a survey ar around you and you could give some answers and so on and so on. And maybe the un uh, most unprobable option would be in your mind that this is no. But when you, it, you see it in the context, it's obvious that this, it's no and it's white, uh, kind of by definition. Philosophers have said that why, uh, snow is white if snow is white. But in the world that we live in, we don't have such situation. We have uh, physics theories that tell that some item like this drops to the floor with certain laws of physics. But if you have a piece of paper, it doesn't fall at the same time. Often our rules that we have around are contextual, even though the kind of underlying principles are then are rule-like. In language, we have often contextual phenomena. We have prototypical red. For example, here we have example of red, or here the dead uh, red. But if you have red wine, it's not that kind of prototypical red. If you have red skin, it's a different kind of redness that you have. Shakespeare sonnet. In Shakespeare, wanted to uh, express the beauty of a woman in a way comparing her with the summer day in England or in some other Central European place where this is a nice metaphor, where it's a kind of sunny day, 25 plus centigrade or something like that. But if you take the same summer day in some other part of the world, in some desert or something like that, so there, there you have co completely different understanding. So our use of language is built on, on metaphors and so on, which work in some context but don't work in uh, some other context. Let's think about subjectivity. If I would ask you to name these colors, these four colors that we see here, so you would give all kinds of answers. 
if I would guess, you might give maybe 10, 20, even 30 different names for these different colors. If you would need to make just a distinction so that you would uh, recognize the difference between these four, that would be easier. Then you might say just green and dark green or something like that. But let's say, like we often are in our, with our language, we are in a situation that we can't refer to the shared reality. So if you had a chance or task to tell your friend that this kind of color, but just giving the name of the color, and your friend would need to reproduce the color, and then you would get a price if that color, particular color is uh, very close to the one that was shown. So then you would really need to start to think that what kind of color it was. And often in our communication, we are in situations where the words that we use, there's no guarantee that another person actually understands the word in the same way. Often it's similar enough so that we can communicate, but often it's not. And one of the underlying thoughts here and ideas is that we have to take this very carefully into account. So we shouldn't assume that the other person is similar to myself, but the what is being said actually could, uh, could mean something different. Red was already, it's a simple thing, but there's this complication. If someone is tall or not, if it's a basketball player, that's a different thing, and, and so on. If a building is tall, American living in New York may think differently than someone living in northern Finland. What is good? What is fair? What is democratic? democratic what is sustainable? The further we go, we come to talk about more difficult, more complex things, and it's far from guaranteed that those would be understood similarly. So the main idea is here that using those technologies which are around us, that has been used for marketing and so on about uh, different products, actually could be used for our benefit in order to make us as a community to understand each other better by measuring that. We have been developing a method which is kind of attempt to go to that direction, grounded in the subjective concept analysis is the name of the method. And I give you a glimpse into the methodology. This kind of contextuality has become more and more commonplace. And often we have such data being analyzed that we have uh, some objects like words and then we have context like documents. And we can extract the meaning, the kind of some kind of representation of a meaning of a word just having millions and millions of documents. And that's what's been ha happening. And Google, for example, is based on that kind of technologies that do this kind of co statistical analysis of various things, including this kind of thing. But now, uh, if we take this individual point of view, if we enhance this basic idea of having something in the context to include this kind of personalization, so that the systems would actually learn what we mean by things, how we understand things. So that uh, is seen as beneficial thing. And this is very recent thing. Actually, this hasn't been published yet. It will be presented in a conference in Australia in about one month from now. But I can reveal you something, and one example of an analysis was the analysis of the State of the Union addresses by U.S. presidents. And here a focus is uh, in the last th three decades. Where we see here in this diagram, we see American presidents and the acronyms in such a way that this is about health, how they have handled health in their talks. An interesting uh, thing was that nothing was told to this system about the meanings of any words or anything. It was about just the statistics of how the word health has been used in context by each president in each year. And what happened is that it seems that this method, which is called self-organizing map, shows an emergent structure where democratic presidents are on the left and uh, republican presidents are on the right. 
with the analysis of this particular case. With this interesting exception here that Barack Obama's talks 2010 and 2011 talk about health as if he was Republican. We can, of course, uh, have all kinds of hypotheses why this is and it's related to the healthcare reform and so on. But the interesting thing is here that, in a way, quite simple statistical analysis conducted in this way show the variation. And now the basic idea is here that whenever, when we have legislation, when we have all kinds of quarrels, uh, communication situations which are problematic, we have different stakeholders, we are building nuclear power plants, we are building all kinds of uh, things, we actually could use this kind of technology in order to enhance the communication, because often it could be, this is an idea, that even there are different values, different opinions, but at least if we don't take into account and if we don't even understand each other properly, so then the discussions over and the, uh, these kind of processes of participations are failing if we don't have the common ground. And in order to create that common ground, the idea is here that we would have something that analyzes and sh shows us that now, now there's a disagreement even where we are trying to reach each other. Thank you very much.